something about this fusion problem I'm still working on. This is still unproven, but it looks good. The experiments show that this is really happening for any Simplicity complex any open set. So we have an open set like this and here we have an example of a closed set and we can put that together like this for example and uh, I just have that here also and we can compute the Betty Vectors in each case and in this case they just add up nicely. There is not even an interaction Cohomology coming in here. The claim is that this bi is always a vector which is non-negative. Now it's not that obvious. I mean I just made experiments yesterday with the higher characteristics. You know, there's Euler characteristic, there's higher characteristics like Wu characteristic and so on. So in that case we don't even have additivity with respect to the sum of valuations. These are multi-valuation and in this case uh, also the Betty vectors don't, this bi can become negative. So I like to interpret this as a kind of, a, you know, you have harmonic forms here, you have harmonic forms here, they merge together to harmonic forms here. But that's not bound to one-dimensional cases or two-dimensional cases at all. This is very, very general. This is an arbitrary com complex and an arbitrary open set and so this should be true in general. Now uh, I was, I mean one thing you can try is really kind of you start with harmonic form here, the harmonic form here and then you put it together and you let the heat flow work and then you have a linear map and the kernel gives you then gives you then that. So the surjectivity is really what you want to do. Want to do. You don't want to have any particles created when you make this fusion. So one of the things which I also tried to experiment with is deformation. Deformation is a very powerful idea. I learned about this Witten deformation as a grad student. So in the late 80s there came this, uh, this book of uh, uh, Seiken, Froese, Kirsch and Simon came out and the, I was slated as a course assistant for a seminar of, uh, on the Pathodis proof of the gauss bonnet chern theorem. So I went into the mountains and I spent a week learning about this. It's a chapter, chapter 11, I think, in that book. And it has this beautiful uh, idea also of uh, written information in it. And uh, so I actually got from that then hooked a little bit on Schrodinger operators because there's also a beautiful chapter on almost periodic Schrodinger operators. So it's a beautiful book and so it's actually quite a nice idea, very simple idea, but nice idea that you take the exterior derivative and you deform it. And uh, I was once working on another deformation of the exterior derivative, which is also uh, it's an integrable system uh, motivated by the total deformation which I worked on during my thesis, just trying to prove uh, uh, an open problem in ergodic theory, the problem of positive entropy. And uh, when you do deformation of the co-cycle or isospectral deformation of the corresponding Jacobi operators, then you keep the Lyapunov exponent the same. So I was hoping that deformation would work. So deformation is a very nice idea. And uh, maybe I'll show you a kind of a little animation I did about 20 years ago when Shlomo Schoenberg was uh, asking me to make a, a, you know, an illustration of the Hopf proof of the Umlaufsatz. So Hopf has this beautiful theorem that if you have a, a, any closed curve in the plane, simple closed curve in the plane, and you look at the tangent curve, then the tangent curve turns by 2 pi and uh, Hopf was proving it using a beautiful deformation argument. So if you deform things and this binding number is an integer, so it doesn't change when you do a continuous deformation. So he was able to, kind of maybe I'll show you the animation of this proof of, once you see the, it's obvious why the Umlaufsatz is gauss bonnet it's a type of gauss bonnet theorem uh, holds. And uh, so uh, it's kind of interesting that this kind of mathematics of deformation appears also in, in that proof of Pactoti for uh, the gauss bonnet chern theorem, which is a kind of relatively difficult theorem in differential geometry. But it's based on a very simple idea. And the simple idea is that you deform the exterior derivative 
using a diagonal matrix. And this we can do in the discrete also. What is nice in the discrete, we don't need any Morse function or anything special. We can take an arbitrary function on G. So we take an arbitrary function on G and then we can make this deformation. And here I just give you kind of this argument why it's not that the LT is, is, is isospectral to L, that's not true, but the kernel stays the same. So the kernel stays the same because by Hodge theory, this is actually, these are cohomology groups, so the, the space of closed forms over the, you, you quotient out the space of uh, exact forms, and then you can uh, see that this uh, ST, this multiplication with this diagonal matrix, actually produces an isomorphism also of the harmonic forms. So it's a, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice simple idea, but actually very powerful because what happens in the continuum when you do that with the Morse function, you can force these harmonic forms, these particles, you can force them to be near the critical points. So kind of you localize things. Uh, in this case, you can force it, for example, if you take the G to be one on one simplex and everywhere else zero, and then when T goes to infinity, what happens, you can force the harmonic forms to be close to that uh, close to that uh, point. And I thought maybe that's kind of a, a possibility, you know, you kind of delocalize things. So you take this uh, one forms, which are here, there's a one form here, there's no boundary, so that there is a one form here, there's another one form here. You kind of localize it maybe here and here, and the zero form maybe you localize here, and then when you are uh, doing it together, there's no uh, interaction happening. But still it's not so clear because in general we have some uh, particles lost. So there are some merge. We have seen that, that there can be some some particles can uh, say for example a, a, a one form can merge with a with a with a with a zero form. <coughs> the harmonic zero form. So the, or a two form can merge with a with a one form. This happens for example when you take a a, a, a closed disk as SG and the open disk is U and K is the boundary. Then what happens is that the, we have seen that last time, what happens is that the, the, the cohomology on the boundary, this one form on the boundary, merges with the two form in the interior and uh, disappears and only the zero form uh, remains. So that's a very interesting Okay, that's it for today.